Hello crafty friends, I'm Eileen from Studio Kato and I'm so happy you're joining me again today for another video. Today I'm doing things a little bit differently. I am making a very long video to put one product in the spotlight, but really it's about how to look at your dyes a little bit differently, specifically your expensive cover plate dyes, and get some more use out of them. Now I hope to do these spotlight videos more in the future where I put a technique in the spotlight and make a ton of different cards with it to show you some uh, new ideas. Now today's star of the show is this new wave cover plate. Uh, it's five by seven, so it's quite large. This is an A2 size panel in comparison and it's by A Pocket Full of Happiness. It's one of my favorite companies. I talk about them a lot and I have no intention of stopping that anytime soon. I love this company. It's based in Europe, but you can also find the products in the US, I think. Um, but yeah, I just love them. Now for this video, I'm going to start with the card that was my most basic idea. It was the first idea I had for this cover plate, and that was just to make a background for it, like intended for a cover plate. So I die cut a couple of pieces of uh, different colors of blue, different tones of blue with this cover plate. I never cut the entire cover plate. I just cut a portion of it, not even half. I think maybe a third of the cover plate um, was covered with my piece of paper. And I just glued all of them on there in a pattern going from light to dark and then light to dark again and again and again. I filled an entire A2 size panel with that just glued them all together with liquid adhesive. Now all of the products I'm using, because I'm using a lot, will be listed in the description below and I will also mention them in the video. You can see them on the top left corner. So I die cut this and that leaves me with a frame and a panel so I can get two cards out of this. That wasn't my intention when I started it, but I figured why not save the frame. Um, so. It's definitely useful to <laughs> die cut right from the center of your panel. Take a little bit of time to uh, line it up so you can get two cards out of it. Now, to finish this card, I wanted to add some flowers. These are also by a pocket full of happiness, and I added a little bit of shading to them with some ink blending. To put this first card together, I am backing that wave panel with a piece of cardboard for some added dimension. And I'm just gluing everything together with liquid adhesive. I'm also adding some sentiments by a pocket full of happiness. These are the hello. And the summer is actually also from the Tropical Paradise die set, which I got the flowers from. So for this card, the wave background is, or the wave cover plate is really just a background, like it was intended. And I love it. I love, um, geometric patterns or repeating patterns. Uh, they're a really cool backdrop. You can um, spice them up with different colors. You can use them for a lot of different occasions, like I'll show you in this video, hopefully. Um, so yeah, I, I really love just basic patterns like this. And the paper piecing to just put all of that background together is very relaxing to me. That's probably why I made 11 cards. I'm gluing all of these leaves and flowers on there. It's really easy to do. I just arrange them, pick them up with some purple tape, and then glue them together. And there you can see the final product or the final card. I added some gems. I am not going to list all of the little embellishments I'm using in this video, but most of them are by Crafty Meraki and Pink Fresh Studio. Now onto my second card. I am going to make a mini slimline card, which if you're not sure about how to use a product in multiple different ways, try to change your card size or card shape. Make a square card, a circle card, or a mini slimline card. Um, obviously, you can easily fill this mini slimline card up with a bunch of waves and get a similar look. But I wanted to make a scene card, a more abstract scene. I love die cuts for that. They just give a little bit more of an abstract look than colored images and it's just a look I really really love. I'm just gluing the waves there and I am using my grid mat to line up the first wave so I know that's on straight 
and then I can just glue everything underneath there right up against it so everything is straight. I trimmed the waves off of the side and then I'm um, just assembling this card. This panel was actually also die cut from the mini sunline frames. It's just the inside so I can easily inlay that. The frames I have stacked up, uh, they're three layers thick and then I can just inlay that beautiful tropical sunset. And I'm also finishing this off with some more tropical paradise flowers from a pocket full of happiness. So all I added, um, or all I changed was the shape of the card and the frame or the die cut that I used to frame my panel here. For this one, it's actually a frame and for the other one, it was a stitched border die. And I love this. It's one product that I changed and the cards look completely different. The sentiment is again from the Tropical Paradise die set by A Pocket Full of Happiness. I line the letters up on my grid mat, pick them up with a piece of purple tape or washi tape, and then I can glue them on and I know they're straight. It's a really easy trick. I used it on the previous card as well, and I'll probably use it again in this video. So there you have the finished card. I love this look. It's very different from the last one. And I, I sort of think it looks like one of those old timey posters for a travel destination or a postcard. I love it. And this is another card I made. I'm not going to show you the process for this one. It's very similar to everything else I've done so far, but it's just using one of those waves as a really simple backdrop to draw attention to the sentiment and to the flower cluster at the bottom. So you don't have to fill up the entire card. You can just use a couple of waves to uh, be a simple backdrop. Now, don't mind the waves here. I am just going to trace them for the next card onto a piece of vellum. I'm actually going to do it twice. This is colored vellum um, and it's light blue and not so light blue. <laughs> So I'm just going to trace the waves so I have the shape on there and I can trim it out with my scissors. For this card, I'm going to pair it with some critters. Usually when I'm making die cut cards or when I'm using die cut cover plates, I like to just stick to die cuts. You'll see that in the rest of this video, most of this is all die cut. But I figured I'd switch things up a little bit and make a scene card out of this with uh, some critters by Hello Bluebird. So I'm making a really simple backdrop with some ink blending. I'm using my trusted <laughs> Inkstand Mini and some Pinkfresh Studio inks. And the background is pretty pale, but not as pale as it looks in the photos later. Don't know what happened there, but <laughs> it looks pretty pale there. I added a sentiment from the same stamp set uh, by Hello Bluebird, and then I'm also going to add one of the critters there. And here I am using that frame that was left over from the first card I made. So I thought this would make a perfect frame for a beach card or a beach scene. And you can use any critter stamps with this or even just more die cuts, but I love to use a frame for scenes like this with critters. I love that little skunk <laughs> in his float. I just, I really love Hello Bluebird. I should do a spotlight video on Hello Bluebird, but we'd be here for days. And there you can see it, how those vellum waves line up with the waves on the frame. And I actually made a second card with a critter. All I added was a little dotted scallops background by Pinkfair Studio, another cover play die, and four of those waves and one of the Hello Bluebird critters. It's a really clean and simple card, so a very different look from, from the previous card. But again, I didn't change many products, so this cover plate is just... I, I love this cover plate, if that wasn't clear yet. And this is where I really fell in love with it. I was playing around with these, these um, wave clusters that I just glued together. I thought this would be easier to form patterns. It's just to, um, just to make things easier for me. I glued a colorway down all of these waves then on some white cardstock scraps and I cut them out with some scissors. You don't have to do this, but it definitely makes things easier. And I found out you can interlock the waves and create a very cool pattern. I love this look. It looks a little bit psychedelic depending on the colors you use. And it's just very different. And I 
love it. And I think you can do this with many cover dies. You can probably do this with chevron patterns, um, just interlock them and create a new pattern. Any geometric pattern die would work for this. I only just glued these onto an A2 size card and um, I added some more sentiments by a pocket full of happiness. And I love this so much that I made the exact same card in different colors as well. I really enjoyed this interlocking wave pattern. Again, all I'm doing is gluing some sentiments on there and that card is finished. Usually I would add a frame, but I didn't want to add anything that would distract from that pretty, pretty background. Now I'm using a lot of colored cardstock here and I don't actually know exactly which colors I used or the names of the colors, but I do use a lot of the Stamp Market cardstock these days and uh, Concord and Ninth cardstock. I really love those. I also have a bunch of colors that I just picked up at dollar stores or <laughs> anywhere where there was cardstock, so not all of them even have names. And I just pick the prettiest colors in my stash for <laughs> making cards. I don't know if they have names or not. This is the second colorway and I'm actually going to use this again on another card. I'm going to repeat both colorways now. I'm making a Halloween card because that uh, colorway that I wasn't even thinking about Halloween cards when I came up with this color combination, but I thought it looked perfect for Halloween cards. All I'm going to do with this is interlock two waves. I did trim them down before gluing them together because the pieces are quite thick and if they're overlapping uh, I can't cut them with my paper trimmer anymore. So I trim them down to four and a quarter uh, wide and then I interlock them and I glued them to the top of my card which I normally don't do um, but it's just sometimes it just you have to spice things up. And if that means gluing something to the top of the card instead of the bottom, your life is probably not very exciting, but that's where I'm at right now. <laughs> I am using the Haunted House die by Spellbinders, and I die cut that from uh, black cardstock. This is stacked uh, three layers high, and I am inlaying some uh, gold. This is actually holographic gold cardstock. Uh, for the windows and the doors to make it look like there's lights shining inside. I the, This die set also comes with some ghosts and some bats and a couple of different smaller dies and I'm just using those to add to the scene. But again, I'm not doing much with this. The backdrop <laughs> should be enough to make this an interesting card. All I'm doing is adding a little bit to it to finish it up. And there you have it, a very Halloween-y card after all of the summery goodness. Um, so yeah, this is obviously a summer die. It's probably also because it was part of a very summery release, but you don't have to stick to summer. You can also make birthday cards with it. I just added some, um, some die cuts more by a pocket full of happiness die cuts. Uh, one of them is glitter cardstock, the flower, and the other is matte um, silver cardstock. I love the combination. I usually don't mix uh, specialty cardstocks like this, but for some reason it just worked out that way. Again, the waves are interlocking there, but you just don't have to do that. You can also just glue one of the wave sets down on a card as a backdrop for a flower die cut, a sentiment, and voila, you have another birthday card. You, It's just such a fun pattern. I love the waves. Again, you don't have to fill up an entire background with them. I have one more that just adds a sentiment and a another subtle cover die in the background. And that's it. A really, really simple card. There are some clean and simple cards that I made with these waves. Some more some cards that were a little bit more involved to make, took a little bit more time, but all in all, I only had four hours of footage to make 11 cards, so it wasn't too bad. That doesn't include all the die cutting though, so maybe add 40 minutes to that or whatever, uh, if you're wondering how long it took me to make these cards. It wasn't, it probably wasn't as long as you were thinking. 
So yeah, that was my first spotlight video. I hope you enjoyed it because I definitely do and there will be more in the future. Not always focusing on a specific product because I know that's not fun if you don't have the product. But this was more intended to make you focus more on uh, getting more out of your cover plate dies, specifically the geometric pattern ones because you can do a lot of fun things with those. I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope you love the cards as much as I do because I am in love with them. And yeah, subscribe if you want to see more of them. You can find all of the products listed in the description below. And I hope to see you next time.